Let's uh, get more now on the Iraq inquiry, which has been told today that Tony Blair's views on the need to remove Saddam Hussein hardened after a private meeting with President Bush a year before the invasion. Britain's former ambassador to the United States, Christopher Mayer, said that the talks in Texas in April 2002 appeared to have been a major turning point. Well, let's uh, talk now to the former British diplomat, Khan Ross. Now, Mr Ross was Britain's leading expert on Iraq at the United Nations for four years before the war, but he quit his job after giving evidence in 2004 to the Butler Inquiry into the use of intelligence. He joins us now uh, from New York. York. Uh, can I just start with the, the opening statements of Sir John Chilcott that this wouldn't be a, a whitewash? And just looking at the last three days, I mean, there are strengths, are there not, to what has already emerged in this inquiry? I agree, and interesting information is coming to light. What I'm concerned about, however, is that the deeper narrative of what took place or what should have taken place and didn't take place is being is still not being revealed. The, uh, the questioning of the panellists, of the Chilcot, Chilcot panellists, is, is terribly polite. Uh, officials are giving an account, which is not a dishonest account, but they're not being pressed to reveal other things that they may know. For instance, to give you one example, one official mentioned the, exist the existence of one document mentioning regime change uh, as a po policy option. The fact is that the UK and US discuss regime change as a potential policy for many years. All the years that I attended UK-US bilateral talks on Iraq, we, we discussed regime change as an option in order to dismiss it. That fact, I think, is something that's quite important and relevant for the inquiry to hear. Its questioning did not reveal that fact. Uh, no, but in terms of the admission of that being discussed, albeit on one briefing paper, that did emerge, which I don't think has emerged before. Uh, and in terms of polite truth. questioning, uh, surely there is nothing wrong with that if you're actually getting to the truth. Are you more concerned, perhaps, that some of the people giving evidence are from within the establishment who feel that, uh, I don't know, perhaps that they, that they can't say something which might rock the boat? Because Sir John Chilcott has made it very clear that he wants anyone with something which is valuable to be, to be proffered in this inquiry. Well, so far he's concentrated only on senior officials, of, of course, who not only many of them still in government, but many of them were deeply themselves involved in executing the war. So they may not have a particular interest in revealing uncomfortable truths about what took place. Several of the officials who've already testified, for instance, uh, uh, were closely involved in uh, the policy discussion of Iraq. They could have been pressed on the question of why no real alternative to war was examined by the British government. I mean, as Sir Christopher, Sir Christopher Mayer's testimony made clear today, the British government was very much swept along by the American determination to go to war. At no point has the panel asked any of these very relevant officials why policy options were not developed for ministers, discussed with ministers, that, that showed real alternatives to war. These existed. There but, were good alternatives okay, to war. But, but just, just to pick up on that, I mean, you know, weapons inspections, so Christopher Mayer said, said today that perhaps had there been more time for the weapons inspectors, war could have been averted. But just, you know, I mean, you, you know the area very well. I was in, the, in Iraq at the time when those weapons inspections were happening as well. Uh, and basically, these inspectors were being denied access all the time, weren't they? And eventually they were being allowed in, given... Uh, not in 2003. Know, well, That's not the case in 2003. Well, no, I'm, I'm looking back to 1997, 1998. And, uh, I know. So, yeah. They were. You're quite right. But not in 2003. Iraq uh, cooperated with the inspectors in 2003 in a way that, that, that was quite unprecedented and I think upset allied plans uh, that expected non-cooperation and thus a trigger for war, thus the, the argument to give to the Security Council to give authorization for war. So that, that was not the case in, in 2003. In terms I don't think, I'm not claiming that inspections themselves were an alternative to war. Uh, this is part of the problem. Everybody just talks about WMD and inspections as being the only story. There, wasn't, there were many, many other more complicated aspects to Iraq policy which are not being talked about by the inquiry so far. For instance, it's my view uh, very firmly that there were decent alternatives to war available in denying uh, Saddam's illegal oil exports. The Saddam regime depended very much on the illegal export of oil through its neighbours. After the war, it was revealed that that, that, that trade amounted to perhaps two or three billion dollars per year, a huge amount of money with which he paid his military, with which he sustained his regime. The UK and US never made any sustained effort to interdict or stop those flows by putting pressure on Iraq's neighbours to do so. There were efforts, but they were sporadic and intermittent. They weren't persistent and high level. 
in October 2001, Tony Blair went to Syria, which was one of the most egregious uh, smugglers of Iraqi oil. There's no evidence that he raised, he raised the smuggling of Iraqi oil at that point. Why not? Why were these options not pursued? Why were they not talked about? Why were ministers not made aware that these options existed? That, to me, is very troubling. This is the stuff that the inquiry should also be talking about. OK, well, we have several months uh, ahead of this inquiry. But uh, for now, of course, uh, uh, we only have the last uh, three days. But, Carl Ross, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us uh, this evening thank on you. BBC News. Thank it you. Is, uh,